everyone, and welcome to my freak show. This episode, we're going to do things a little bit differently when I review episode one of AHS Delicate. Let's get into it. Okay, so I guess I'm going to do the synopsis first and then my thoughts because I know you guys are definitely going to want to know what I think about this show. So first we start off with actual Emma Roberts as Anna Victoria Alcott laying in bed, waking up, and then somebody is in bed right next to her. It scares the crap out of her, so she gets up, chases them down the hall, they end up getting away, but after they're gone she realizes that there's blood all over her hands and then that flashes us back to one week previous for the show so the show flashes back one week previous to the opening incident and anna and dex are meeting up with their dr hill in order to receive Twilight Anastasia for retrieval of eggs. And the reason given that Anna and Dex cannot have a baby is it's an unexplained infertility. Before Anna closes her eyes and lets the medication take over, she starts hallucinating of witches and all this weird stuff. And then she finally closes her eyes. And this opens the segue to the awesome opening credits. After the opening credits, we start with the show where Anna and Dax are leaving the clinic. However, this woman named Miss Preacher comes into the clinic and she takes a photo of Anna as she's leaving. Anna then sees the same woman outside of the clinic that she saw earlier that morning. She tells Dex about it, but he says, mm, it's, it's a big city, you're popular. What are you going to do? Then they go to lunch and they talk about baby names and how this is going to change their life and how they're excited to be parents. Then we all get the scene that we've been waiting for, which is Kim Kardashian. Um, Victoria goes over to see her publicist, who is played by Kim Kardashian, and her name is Siobhan. But obviously it's not the same Siobhan Walsh as in the book. I think Kim does a great job playing herself. I want to see how her future continues, but I, th I thought she did okay. She also is there having Anna autograph stuff, which is the first time we see one of the Summer Day dolls that Anna had back from when she was a teen movie idol. And now she is in her th later 30s, and she is now an actress of her own right and just came out with a fantastic uh, movie that she starred in. Uh, she did not direct it, obviously, but she starred in, and she is now getting a lot of success for it. Anna then goes to meet up with Dex, and when she sits down on the park bench beside him, he notices there is a spider in her hair, which I thought, that's pretty awesome. We're definitely getting a connection with this with the hair and the spiders right now, really digging it. After that, Anna and Dex go back home, and Dex is pissed because Anna has left out the expensive suppositories that she was using the night before when we saw her on the toilet. So, I mean, I, I, I applaud the show for showing what women have to go through regarding infertility and their trials and tribulations, but I did not need to see that. Anna insists that she did not leave out the medication, but of course, Dex basically just placates her and he's like, mm, okay. Now this is when the show segues to Anna and Dex going to dinner with uh, Dex's coworker, Talia. Talia, of course, is sitting there with her partner or her wife, I apologize, I don't remember, and she is telling Anna and Dex about this new person that has come into the art gallery and how much she looked exactly like Dex's ex-wife, Addie. So Talia and Dex keep talking about how this new woman looks exactly like Addie. And then that's what kind of gets Talia off on a little tangent about that Addie would be so proud of Dex and really happy for him. And that kind of gets to uh, Anna just a little bit. So she excuses herself to the bathroom. And that's, of course, where she goes to call Siobhan. She just kind of lets it out. And we kind of get more in tune of what Anna's insecurities truly are. She feels like maybe she's just too old to have a baby. She's only 36. I mean, I don't understand. I don't really see people as old until they're in their hundreds, but to each their own. But Anna feels like she's kind of old and dried up. So dried up that there's like no eggs in there. And then what if she's so dry that she just gives birth to spiders? That's whenever Siobhan tells her, oh, well, don't worry. If you give birth to spiders, I'll love those little spider babies like they were my own. That was a great 
catch there. Another thing with spiders, and I'm really looking forward to see how this progresses. Anna goes back to the table, and then later Anna and Dex are in bed. Anna has her calendar pulled up online on her phone, and she literally sees the time for her appointment the next day change from one to another. And she flips out. I was about to say she freaks out, but I'm trying to say flips as well. Huh? And she calls the clinic and tries to rechange her appointment. And the doctor's like, look, what's going on? She tries to explain to him that, you know, somebody could possibly be messing with her. He, He's like, okay, look, fine, whatever you say, I'll, why don't you just come in an hour before the appointment time? And she says, okay, great, that'll be fine. So Anna goes to meet Siobhan because she needs to get dressed and ready because she's meeting uh, with and having an interview with Andy Cohen. And I thought that was really funny that Watch What Happens Live was on this episode. So during the actual taping of the show, Anna sees Miss Preacher out there in the audience. It kind of freaks her out, but she manages to kind of recatch herself and continues with the interview. On the way home from the show, Anna pulls up her uh, internet and she actually starts doing a little search about Miss Preacher and finds that Miss Preacher has posted that Anna, the picture of Anna that she took outside of the, of the fertility clinic. When Anna gets home afterwards, she is alone and she has this overwhelming sensation that somebody else is in the house. When she's in the kitchen and she sees that Instead of using her online calendar now, she's using post-it notes to put things around the house, not using her calendar in case somebody is having access to it. But when she gets home, the appointment that she has put on the refrigerator, the post-it has been ripped in half and put back up, which prompts Anna to realize there is somebody in the house. Immediately, Anna is scared. She calls Dex. She asks him, where are you? And he says, hey, I'm at my opening. Don't you remember? And she says, well, why didn't you say anything? And he says, well, we agreed it was too much for you. And she's scared being all by herself in the house. And she says, you know what? I'm okay. I'm going to come meet you. And Cookie says hi again. Hi, baby. She says, I'm going to come meet you at the party. And it is extremely weird. The new woman's name is Sonia. And she absolutely is Addie. They're the same character. But the way she sneaks up on Anna and the way she treats her, it's just so crazy. I just thought their interaction and Sonia was either she's a red herring or there is something about her that we're going to know soon. Sonia is your quintessential artist who will use her own body products to make art. I mean, to each their own, right on to each their own, but I found her to be very freaky deaky. Anna goes to have the embryos implanted because they got the call that there were actually two embryos. Anna goes for the implantation and before she's put under, she sees these women in black. I believe one of them is Miss Preacher surrounding her before she goes out. When Anna wakes up from the procedure, that's when the show actually starts from the beginning because when she wakes up, that's when somebody is in her bed tilting their head to the side and then they run out and Anna runs after them, can't catch them, but whenever she goes back, she sees the red all over her and it's not blood, thank goodness. It is actually red lipstick. And when she goes to the mirror, the woman has written in red lipstick, don't do it, Anna, on the mirror, which is so creepy. So my overall thoughts on this episode was, it was a pretty good opener. I mean, it could have been worse, and it wasn't. I did not have high expectations for it. I just wanted to look at what the show presented us, and I thought it was decent. I would absolutely rate the episode a six for Kim Kardashian not sucking. Anna Alcott, or sorry, uh, Emma Roberts serving as Anna Alcott, she actually really seemed to capture Anna's essence that I picked up on from the book. Um, also, Matt Sersney did a great job in being Dex. I thought the show did a great job as well in bringing in some supernatural elements to it. I wonder if the women in black are from, uh, from Coven, or they could be possibly scum. They could be from the apocalypse. Who knows? I just hope they're not from the apocalypse. However, it was really crazy because the opening credits gave you so many apocalypse vibes because it was just basically all in red and black. And then Sonya's painting in this episode, she t 
She did it from her own menstrual blood, guys. Wow, I mean, that's dedication. I gotta say, snaps to her for dedication, but thumbs down for the grossness. I don't know who would buy that, but cheers to you if that's your thing. But her painting was also very red and black. There, there that is, the tones are there. Also, the show itself was also very dark. And I apologize, the light is now coming through on my face, so it's so crazy. The tone itself was extremely dark. It was not the happy, oh yay, I'm having a baby, I want to have a baby, kind of happy-go-lucky that you would see on a normal woman who wants to have a baby. No, this is hard and it's disgusting, especially whenever they pull out the wand, because of course now, those of us who have had babies or had gynecological, gyne gynecological checkups, excuse me, you know you get that wand, and then when they put the condom on it, ah, oh, they just made it so realistic with the snapping of the condoms and the snapping of the um, latex rubber gloves. It was, I thought it was definitely decent. It was worth the watch, and if you guys haven't read the book, it does do a great job in setting it all up. Again, it does look like that certain characters have been merged, certain characters put out, and so far, I I think it's okay what they're doing with it. So again, I give it a six. Say gorginas! Hello everyone, and welcome to my freak show. As usual, we're doing things a little different this season. Let's look at episode two of AHS 12 Delicate. This episode is titled Rockabye. The episode picks up with the end of episode one. Anna has called the police. They've looked into security. Dex is now home with the dogs. They see Dex leave the apartment, but they see nobody come in. They asked Anna, like, how did you get the lipstick all over your hands? Do you recognize the person? Why didn't your dogs bark? Which it was weird. The person who was in there didn't alert her dogs. I thought that was really weird because obviously then the person knows her dogs. And I, what I thought was really weird too was that Dex was wearing Anna's pink hat. If you guys don't remember, Anna wore that hat in episode one and it seems like Dex was wearing it in this episode. The police, they ask Dex, did you see anybody? And he says, no. They ask Dex, do you know anybody who would have wanted to break in? He says, no. So the police are like, okay, well, we'll just keep an eye out. And I forgot to mention in my previous review that when Anna, after she chased the person off and she went back and she found the stuff written on the mirror, there was also the picture of her embryos before they were planted into her. Somebody had taken that picture and ripped it apart. And then we cut to the next day where Anna goes to meet Siobhan. And as soon as Anna steps into the office, everybody is clapping. They're so excited for her because it is revealed that Anna has been nominated for an Oscar. And she goes, she goes to the door into Siobhan's office. And I have to say that whole scene was the best. Now, Anna is, like, when she meets Javon, she's got this little red pimple on her face, which I thought was kind of weird. I wondered if that was supposed to be intentional because I didn't think the makeup crew would, like, let that slip by. I loved Kim's performance in this section right here because Anna is like, oh, yay. And then when Siobhan, like, takes her back into her office, she's like, what the F, you know? Why does your face look like a cat's a-hole when you come in and you hear you're getting nominated for an Oscar? I mean, she just went to town on Anna's character. Like, um, oh my God, she was telling her too about how one guy, how everybody in the office worked so hard to get Anna all this publicity and that one guy's jaw will never recover because of all of the blowers and mowers that he's been giving. <laughs> and I have to say, I felt that so hard. Siobhan tells Anna, look, you gotta get it together. If you really want this award and you really want to be grateful to us for everything we've done for you, you're gonna actually try to win this award. So Siobhan gives her a vial of B12, which, okay, sometimes tricky on the stomach. So Anna does throw it up later, sadly. And that's whenever she notices that her little red bump is like really getting worser. 
And that segues us into the opening credit. Now, after Anna vomits, she goes on ahead and she calls Dr. Hill's office, which Cora answers. And Cora knows about the break-in. She knows about everything. And Anna's like, did I tell you? And Cora says, yeah, of course. You told me this yesterday. Anna's like, just please put on Dr. Hill. And you can hear Dr. Hill in the background telling Cora, no, 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 no. I, I don't want to talk to her. And Cora's like, uh, okay, hang on. And Dr. Hill's, Hill's like, fine. And then he picks up the phone. He's like, Anna! Anna asks him if it's possible that she could be pregnant. And he says, absolutely not. It takes two weeks for the implantation to, like, for the hormones to gestate from the implantations. So he said that he absolutely recommends not taking a pregnancy test until for 14 days. And then she'd be able to take one. During that time as well, Miss Preacher has also posted more things online about Anna. And people are starting to say like, oh my God, this woman does not deserve a baby. That kind of thing. Now, Anna is standing there at the oven. And I thought this was a great way to show how much time had passed. Anna is standing there and she's making like a tomato, a tomato bisque. And then all of a sudden, the camera pans to Anna's face. And then it pans back down and she's making a different colored soup. And there's a calendar right by her as well. And the calendar also has the days marked off. So when it first looked at the tomato soup, the days on the calendar was like, you know, first day. And then when Anna goes to look back at the calendar and you see the soup is a different color, it also says that that day, it's been 14 days since the moment that Anna started making this soup. It's like, wow. I mean, this poor woman is really losing all sense of time at this point. When Dex tells her, hey, let's take a pregnancy test, she's like, wait, we can't. We have to wait two weeks. And he's like, Anna, it's been two weeks. She looks at the calendar and she sees, indeed, it has been two weeks. So they take the test and happy, 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 they are pregnant. Yay! They go to Dr. Hill, have it confirmed. Anna goes home and that is where Siobhan meets her because they have an awards banquet that night. And Siobhan has brought her the dress that Madonna has worn from the Music Awards, which I wonder if that was actually like true. Okay, so sorry. I actually did look it up and it was the 1991 Oscars that Madonna wore a Bob Mackie dress. It's obviously not the same, but the show says that it is. I do have to say that the scene was kind of iconic because Emma and Kim do the dance from, you know, they're doing the song and everything from Madonna's Oscar performance from 1991. If those of you out there are even young enough to remember that, but I mean, it was a really good section. And I thought Kim also did a really good job in again, playing herself. But while they are singing, the mirror breaks, causing both of them to be like, huh? oh my God, this is crazy. So now we're at the Oscars. Anna is there in Madonna's dress. She looks gorgeous. And then she sees, not like her rival or arch enemy, but the show is trying to make you think that this is, you know, the newer, younger version of Anna. Babette! When she asks Anna who did her dress, Anna tells her, like, it's vintage. Madonna wore it to the 1991 Oscars. <laughs> Freaky. Breaking Babette says, oh, I'll have to Google it. I wasn't born then. <laughs> you YouTube that, Babette, and I hope you find this. So Anna's in the bathroom, okay? She needs to take a little break before she's actually, before her category comes up. And this woman comes into the bathroom and she says, oh, and oh God, I'm a big fan. She wasn't physically fit. She had on this gaudy makeup. She had this gaudy teeth. And it was like, great, thanks. Deuces. The woman like won't take no for an answer. She's like, are you are you nervous? I'm nervous. Everybody has gone in the bathroom. Anna starts getting nauseous and she runs into the bathroom to vomit. And that's when the woman follows her and she puts her hand on Anna's tummy, on Anna's tummy, and she's like, baby. Anna's like, leave my baby alone. And she pushes the woman back. The woman falls and hits her head on the sink counter. She falls back and blood is leaking out everywhere. And what does Anna do, guys? She says to the woman, 
I'm sorry. And then she walks out. She just walks out because her section is coming up. Her ward section is coming up. So when she leaves the bathroom, Babette's like, good luck. And is like, man, you too. And it sits in her seat. And she's like looking at the door, making sure nobody goes in there. She wins the award. But I love it that Zachary Quinto was the um, award giver. And he's the one who gave Anna the award. So anyway, Anna goes up there and she is giving her speech. And then she starts feeling kind of bad. And then she starts throwing up and she's throwing up like black goo almost. And while she's doing that, nobody is helping her. I don't understand. Everybody, even Dex and Siobhan are sitting there just like, mm, really girl, really? That's when she noticed somebody was walking to the woman's restroom, which is where the body was. And Anna's like, no, don't go in there. <laughs> I have to say, I loved that part. It was so great. It was so cool. When somebody's going in there, just like, don't go in there. She faints. And when she comes to, she's laying on a gurney. Dex is over her. And she's actually in like the vestibule right outside the bathroom. And she's like, don't go in the bathroom. Nobody go in there. Nobody go in there. And they're like, what are you talking about? What's wrong with the bathroom? And she looks in the bathroom and there's no woman there. Cooksey says hi. Where'd she go? <laughs> what happened? Was she real? And it was also while Anna was giving her speech, her acceptance speech, that she saw the dead woman out in the out in the crowd. And she also saw this preacher. And so it made everything spin. And then that's when Anna got sick. So something weird is definitely going on here. So Anna kind of passes out. And when she wakes up, she's back at the house. And Siobhan is with her. And she's like, it's okay. You passed out. We brought you back here to sleep. It's okay. Rock my baby. <laughs> I have to give it to her. It was definitely creepy. I enjoyed Kim's performance more in this episode, especially with the beginning with the Gorginas and the BJs and all that stuff. Everything has made Anna so crazed that Talia has offered Anna and Dex uh, her extra house for them to go stay at. And that's when Dex says, hey, we're going to be so close to my mom while they're on the way to Talia's house. And it's like, oh, great. And Dex is like, hey, don't worry. She's not going to come bother us. That's the last thing she's going to do. They get there and they meet Kamal. I'm so excited that we finally get Kamal. Kamal is her personal security guard. So while Anna and Dex are having dinner, she goes to get something from the kitchen. And that's when she opens the silverware drawer and sees... Dex and Addie and Talia and her wife in a picture in the silverware drawer. It's kind of pushed up underneath. Them. Anna pulls it out. She looks at it and she's like, wow, you know, I guess the two women really do look alike. And the you as a viewer get to see huh, Sonia and Addie. Wow. They really do look alike. Dex and they go to bed. And then during the night, Anna hears noises coming from downstairs. Kamal sees her and he's like, you know, Miss Alcott, what can I do? What can I do to help you? And she says, dude, there's I, I heard noises down in the basement. And he says, okay, I'll go check it out because we don't have cameras down there. Ooh, I wonder why there's no cameras in the basement. That gave me chills. So Kamal goes down there. He's, Anna does go down there and they just see a bunch of Talia's old stuff that she had. Either it's, it's Talia's baby stuff or it is Talia's stuff from her babies. One thing I forgot to say in the review is that Siobhan had an IVF fertility journey and hers did not work out. So Anna asks her a couple of times, look, are you sure it's okay for me to be telling you about my journey? I know that yours failed. Siobhan tells her, look, it's okay. Just because my journey failed doesn't mean that I won't be here for you. While having a yoga class, Anna starts having cramps in her stomach. And that's whenever Kamal rushes her to the hospital. While in the hospital, Anna is given a sonogram by a nurse. And of course, the nurse is played by Cara Delevingne. The nurse's name is Ivy, and Anna kind of recognizes her because we see her as the woman that's kind of been following Anna around recently. She gives Anna the ultrasound and tells her, okay, I'm going to go find a doctor. But before anybody comes back in, Anna feels a lot of pain, goes into the bathroom, and loses the baby. And the episode ends with Anna 
and Dax mourning the loss of their baby and the emergency room doctor telling them that there was not a nurse named Ivy there in the hospital, leaving everything like, Woo! what's going on? Okay. So I definitely give this episode better than the first because it was better than the first. It, I, again, I liked Kim Kardashian's performance better, especially in the beginning. Oh my God. Again, they just did a great job in making her, her. I think Emma did a really good job encapsulating what Anna was going through and what was demonstrated in the book. Just going along for the story, I'm kind of enjoying myself. I hope it picks up though in the creepiness. I gotta say, I need it to pick up. I need, I need something a little bit more than this. I need something to hold on to and want to move on to the next episode. I mean, I want to move on to the next episode. Yeah. But at this point, I need something more, guys. I need something more. Do you guys need something more? Because I need something more. I give this episode a 6.5, okay? Hopefully it'll start turning up a little bit more, but I absolutely loved the part where Anna was in the bathroom with the fan and then she killed her. I was like, whoa, that came out of like left field. I enjoyed that moment. Are they trying to say that Anna's having visions or that somebody is giving her these visions? I'm really looking forward to that. I just need more of the bathroom episode, the bathroom section that we got this episode. If they'll give us more of that, I think I'm going to enjoy this season. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my freak show. I am Mary Girl Moody, and today let's review episode three of AHS Delicate titled When the Bow Breaks. Now, I absolutely have a lot of feels on this episode. I don't know about y'all, but I am absolutely ready for this review. So let's jump into the synopsis first. Anna and Dex have left the hospital. They, I don't remember exactly what was said about the nurse, but Anna's just like, look, they're gonna think I'm crazy, but it's not a coincidence that this nurse gives me an ultrasound and then like 30 seconds later, I miscarry. Dex is just trying to come um, to placate her and let her know, look, it's just, it just doesn't happen. He asks her, what do you want to do now? And she says, well, I want to try again. Don't you? And he says, yes, but I want to wait just a little bit. And this leads Anna and Dex kind of into a little bit of a tiff. And Anna asks Kamal to stop the car and she goes into the woods and he just lets her go. She is being stalked and harassed by somebody and she just wants to walk into the woods and he's like okay where she comes across a pile of rocks and they're kind of like lit on fire or something but mrs preacher is just like up doing her like teenage thing up in the tree she's just hanging out up there like just looking at anna and she tells her i've been looking for you and instead of just confronting her and asking her why what do you want or anything like that anna turns around and runs which, okay, I understand. I'm a little older. Maybe I would take, I would handle things differently, but I want to know what you guys would have done at that point. Sure, we were scared, absolutely, but what would you have done? Would you have just straight up run away from his preacher? Or would you have just stood there a little longer and asked her, why have you been looking for me? What is it you want? <laughs> or like I said, would you have just turned around and run away? Let me know in the comments. All right, so Again, Anna turns around, runs away, and she goes home, and Dex is there. And it's been maybe like four hours since Anna left Dex and Kamal that she's been in the woods. And Dex is like, I've been so worried. I had no idea where you were. He's like, everybody's been out searching for you. So Anna is like, well, why were you so worried? And he tells her that the doctor at the hospital gave her a sedative after the miscarriage. Anna asks a very damn good question finally, and she says, then why did you let me just walk off into the woods, Dex, when you know I've had this heavy sedative? Why did you just let me go into the woods? And he used that stupid excuse, I didn't know what to do. So Anna tells Dex and Kamal, because Kamal has entered the house at this time, he's very thankful that Anna is safe. She tells them about the woman in the woods, Mrs. Preacher in the woods in the fire. They go to where she saw it, which I'm really surprised Anna can just recall where she saw this woman in the woods that she's never really been to before, but she must have a better memory than myself. But there's nothing there. No Miss Preacher, there's no rocks, there's no fire, there's nothing. 
Of course, Kamal and Dax don't believe Anna, but there was one thing I did forget to mention in my other review, which I'm not exactly sure at this point if I mentioned it, but Anna has this little tiny red spot on her face. It was very small and faint, maybe in the second episode. And I thought to myself, oh my God, like makeup didn't just cover that pimple. It's just so prominent in episode two. And I, and it definitely was not there in episode one. And then I thought, okay, well, that's obviously not a makeup mistake. That must be something that is important to the episode. And it is because in this episode, it starts getting bigger. As the episode progresses, that little red tiny dot that you think is just a little pimple that's coming out, it is not. It's getting bigger. So in the next clip, Anna has fallen asleep after she has been looking up on social media and just overwhelms herself with it. She takes a little nap. And when she wakes up, she is standing actually in her bathroom with Dex in the bed. So again, time has passed significantly for her and she does not remember it. Now, the weirdest thing happens next. I, I don't, I don't even know if that it's coming out of my mouth. Anna hears noises downstairs and she goes down and we have MJ Rodriguez, awesome, playing Nicolette, who is Talia's house manager, basically. But she's using the breast pump and she turns around and she sees Anna. She's like, oh, I didn't know you were there. I'm just over here using your breast pump. Nicolette claims that she is a single mother to her eight week old baby. While she's talking to Nicolette, Anna sees a basket of like fruit from this person, Hamish. I guess he was the director of her film, The Orator, that she's so famous for. I do like the spunky little connection um, between Kim Kardashian and him. She just tells him like it is. I bet you it's like one of those love fuck relationships. You know what I mean. So she goes to Dex and she's like, dude, how does this guy know where we are? We said that we weren't going to tell anybody. But he says, I didn't think it would be bad to tell this guy. Seriously, Dex literally has no sense of logic. Now, at this time, Dex takes notice of the little red spot that's on Anna's face. And Anna's mind flashes back to Cara Delevingne when she was in the hospital with her in the previous episode. And that she had a small little dimple as well. Which, in the book... Siobhan, the book character, had a birthmark in the shape of a small hand under her chin, which supposedly that marked the sign of a witch. So I'm wondering if this is the substitute from the book to the, uh, to the show regarding that little um, birthmark, supposedly. Now, at this point, I don't know if Dex was actually trying to be nice or if he was just trying to push Anna off on someone else. But he suggests that he's getting up because he's going to call Siobhan and have her come over to visit Anna because it seems that Anna really needs some girl time. So Dex gets up to go call Siobhan. Anna turns around and then all of a sudden Siobhan is right there. So again, Anna has lost time and actually she has eaten all of the candy and the fruit and everything that was left for her by Hamish. And it's really actually endearing to see the friendship between Siobhan and Anna, that Siobhan is actually there for her, telling her, look, I, I do support you and I know exactly what you're going through. And that is really what Anna needs at that point. So she cooks Anna a nice, fresh, organic meal and the two go walking out on the beach and Anna finds a summer day doll in the beach in the sand. And as Anna and Siobhan walk away from the beach with Kamal, two of the women are actually standing back in the beach all dressed in black with these big like you know deer antlers and it's so obvious that they're there but obviously the two the three of them don't see them but they're there they're watching over anna and siobhan she also convinces anna in their time together that dex is not having an affair with sonia regardless of the fact that sonia looks just exactly like his dead ex-wife the woman in the hospital did not cause her miscarriage People are not watching her. There's not a conspiracy against her. Now, this was the section that I truly enjoyed in the episode. 
After Siobhan leaves, Anna goes downstairs into the basement. She's got some wine and she sees Talia's like baby items. So she starts going through the photo albums and flipping through the pictures, looking at her clothes. She actually crawls up and falls asleep, I guess, drunkenly on the basement floor. When Anna wakes up, she hears a noise coming from that little door downstairs in the basement. And I don't know if I mentioned that in a previous review. I don't even remember if they had mentioned it before, but I don't understand. Anna goes to the door. She opens this little door and she starts crawling inside. Okay. She will not stand there and ask Miss Preacher way out in the woods that she obviously knows where she is, where there's fire and there's open area. She won't stand there and talk to Miss Preacher, but she'll crawl in a tiny microscopic hole to go investigate a hole in the wall. Have that make sense to me? She continues to crawl and then um, the ceiling rises. So she stands up and she starts walking down even more narrow corridors. She sees like in one space, like little fetuses kept in jars. It's very disjarring that she will keep going forward. And then Anna comes to an old school looking gynecological exam table. Guys, I don't know about y'all. Comment below, please. But I would have noped the fuck out of there at the sound coming from the little door. I would never have opened that door. I would never have gone forward. How Anna did not do that. It kept going closer like, oh, what is this crazy contraption I see here? Oh, oh my God. Okay, I, at this point, I don't really like how they're writing Anna, but I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying Anna's bad decision, if that makes sense. Girl, Anna finally sees the words Satan written on the wall and finally nopes the fuck out of there. But that's sadly when she are, she is taken by the women that are all dressed in the black with all the horns and shit, which I don't know how they didn't knock into the ceiling. I mean, that's gotta be weird having like those big, like eagle horns that are feathered and shit coming out of your head. How do you walk around in that little tiny place with those big ass horns? I don't get it, but it's the show. We'll just go with it. So the women get Anna into the chair and they inject her with something while they're chanting from a very well-known season, Apocalypse. They're chanting the Avante Satana, you know, that, that chant. Then Anna goes to sleep, wakes up in the basement outside the door, obviously back where she went to sleep. So she wakes up, sees the little door and that it's closed. And finally she nopes the hell out of there, runs the fuck away. Finally. Now Anna runs to get out of the basement, but it is locked. Dex thankfully is there, opens the door for her. And he's like, what are you doing? So she tells him, look, I shouldn't have gotten drunk and I shouldn't have went downstairs, but I did. I had this terrible dream and I felt something move in my stomach. I felt the baby move. And of course he does not believe her. Now, as Anna and Dex are talking, she trips over the summer day doll that she found earlier at the beach. Dex looks at it and he's like, what is up with this? So she tells him that she found it at the beach and tries to explain to him that a 15 year old discontinued doll with pins in its stomach that looks like his wife is not a coincidence. It was left by her stalker, which he feels is unlikely. Oh my God. Dex is either choosing specifically not to see the clues or he's in on it and he's trying to basically gaslight her into believing that there's nothing going on when there actually is. So that's just my feeling. It's very infuriating at this point to see how Dex is treating her. So at this point, I do feel a little terrible about some of the things that I've judged Dex on, but not too bad. However, he does break down and let Anna know, look, this was my baby too. So she holds them, they have some private time together. And the next morning, Anna wakes up and she calls her doctor and lets him know, look, I'm still having pregnancy symptoms. Is it possible I was misdiagnosed? He says, no, he agrees. So, okay, come on in in a few weeks and we'll, we'll check out, we'll see what's going on. So while Anna is standing there talking to Nicolette, her gums start to bleed. 
Anna goes to the bathroom and of course her gums are absolutely bleeding and she Googles it and sure enough, bleeding gums is an early symptom, uh, a sign of uh, early pregnancy. So she's very happy. Okay, so people not taking Anna seriously about the pregnancy leads her to go to the drugstore where they have the baby sound monitors there. And sadly, that place does not have one, though Anna does see the antler women there. I guess I should like take my hair and like start doing it up like that so that way I can start like matching them. That would be like so sexy, though nobody else sees the women. However, they don't have the monitors, but the woman does feel Anna's stomach, which I thought her stomach, I, I think I just got done saying her stomach looks so small, but she actually is starting to look about maybe three to four months pregnant. She's got a little small tummy to her and the clerk puts her hands on Anna's tummy and sure enough, she can feel the baby and feel him kicking. And she says, yes, your baby is a kicker, which this surprises Anna and makes her incredibly happy. But as Anna is leaving the drugstore, she sees Sonia standing on the side of the road. She gets out to go to confront Sonia, I guess, talk to her. And that's when Dex walks up to Sonia. Now, Sonia straight up sees Anna. She knows she's standing there. The two make eye contact and Sonia even smiles at her. But Dex walks up to Sonia and says, son. So I guess that's his little nickname for her. And the two of them walk into this place together. And that's when Anna turns right around and goes back into the car with Kamal. So Anna is sitting back in the car and then she sees, I believe it's Cara Delevingne again, outside the window before they've taken off. She tells Kamal, he goes out, doesn't see her. And she's like, well, I told you somebody was following me. So she goes back to her online calendar, changes back the password, types in in the calendar title, what do you want? The person replies back to Anna almost immediately and tells her, I want to warn you. And then another one is underneath that says, they did something to your baby. Anna replies back, did they kill my baby? They reply back with, your baby isn't dead. And Anna sits down and she's like, oh my God, yay. And at the same time, she's also sniffing something incredibly delicious. And she goes to the end of the actual like back lanai and she looks over and she sees a dead like animal that's like all maggoty infested and stuff. She's repulsed yet hungry all at the same time. And while that's happening, happening, Nicolette is looking on at Anna and watching her. Okay. So here are my final thoughts on the episode. I liked the episode, though I hated all those reasons that I listed before in the review of what they did with Dex. They tried to make him human when he was talking about the baby, but they had it for such a short time that it was very difficult for me to associate with him in any way, shape, or form, or even sympathize with him. So I wish that they would have focused on that just a little bit more. The one where Anna goes downstairs in the basement and actually goes through that little door, but she won't actually talk to Miss Preacher outside in the open air in the light. Again, it did not make sense to me, but it was a nice little scary scene that just seemed to be hodgepodge in there. But, I mean, it was a confusing yet decent episode. I'm going to give it a five. It had, you know, some pretty, you know, decent acting from Emma Roberts. Again, I will have to see how this whole season plays out in order to see if I like Dex's character or not in any shape, way, or form, because right now I don't. Kim Kardashian's doing okay still, um, and the storyline is okay. I just hope it, I want it to progress a little further. It's episode three. I mean, we only have two episodes left before the actual season finale. I want this to progress a little further, a little faster. So I'm looking forward to that. But again, it's decent. I give it a five. I'm looking forward to watching the next couple of episodes. Hello everyone and welcome to my freak show. Today we are going to talk about episode 4 of AHS Delicate titled Vanishing Twin. Now this episode opens in Hampton Court, England, 1555. And based on the time, I assume that this is Elizabeth, who is Anne Boleyn's daughter, and her older sister, who is Queen Mary Tudor. And Mary has given birth to a child herself, no doctor, and won't let anyone in her room to see her or the baby. Now her sister Elizabeth has arrived and has insisted on seeing her sister. And while she's in the room with her, voices start from a dark corner. And of course the voices chant the Satan song and the witches in black appear in the corner. 
Leslie Grossman and Billy Lord are the witches and they tell Mary that it is time. Billy Lord gives us a little exposition and says that the baby has been waiting over 6,000 years to be born. And then when the baby raises its hand up as if to say, hey, that's me. It's the same fucking hand as the baby from Apocalypse. I am not gonna lie. This is disappointing. This is another Antichrist. Another Antichrist. Basically, it seems that Mary has made a promise that in exchange for this baby, she will be given a fruitful reign. Elizabeth basically like sticks her nose down on this and telling the witches that she's never going to be that desperate, come to that same decision. And the witches tell her, yeah, your time's gonna come. And she says, nope, it will not. I will never make this choice. So the witches cast a spell of, you know, barrenness on her. Not like a, you know, barrenness is like a title, but like she's barren, she can't have kids. So the witches leave with the baby and Mary forces her sister from the room, and that's all we get of this section of the episode. The actual show starts with Anna confronting Dex about seeing him with Sonia earlier in the previous episode. Now, he says that he was meeting Sonia for work. Now, Anna also tells Dex about her and Kamal seeing Miss Preacher, and she insists that Miss Preacher is the one who's probably been hacking into her online app, stalking her, leaving the dolls, doing all that stuff, and Dex reminds her that Cora at the clinic told them that Miss Preacher is always there spewing her conspiracy theories. Now, Anna doesn't remember Dex being there when Cora said that, but Dex insisted that he was. Now, you know your girl here. I went back to the episode and I checked. And in episode two, timestamp 725, seven minutes, 25 seconds, Anna is in Siobhan's office in her business building and Anna goes into the conference room at Siobhan's office to call Cora. So Dex lied. He was obviously not there. Both Dex and Anna at this point just agree to let it go and they're going to go see Dr. Hill the next morning. Afterwards, Anna is called by the smell of the dead raccoon outside. So she wraps it up in a blanket picks it up and brings it inside the house. Nicolette catches her with it and Anna says, look, I'm just an animal lover. I was just trying to see if I could nurse it back to health before it died. Anna has done lost her damn mind, y'all. She puts this baby, sorry, it's not a baby, but it's a dead raccoon. She treats it like a baby. She puts it in Talia's old bassinet, which is still in the basement. I can't believe she still went back down there. So the next day, Anna is meeting with Siobhan. The Ashleys are there, and this is our girls, Billy Lord and Leslie Grossman, and they are a team of top crisis experts. I loved it, guys. I loved how they ripped Anna's character apart. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. So far, Anna declines their offer to make a viral video in, like, taking back her feminine power, but that will change. Later, Anna is taking Kamal through the house, and she notices all of the security cameras that he has now installed. And surprise, surprise, the mother-in-law that Dex insists that Anna will never see because she'll never show up, shows up as a surprise in Anna's bathroom using her beauty products. Ew! Dex's mother is named Virginia, and she says that she's there to help Dex and Anna through the terrible time of the break-in. Then she kicks Anna out of her own bathroom so she can talk to her son and has the nerve, the nerve to say that Anna is the one that's uptight. The gall of this bitch here. He tells his mother, Anna just miscarried their baby. And to be nice, Virginia says that basically she's there to ask Dex to help her because she's going to sue Dex's father, her husband, and needs his testimony to help her case. Like I said, this bitch, this bitch got some fucking nerve to ask for some shit like that. Degrades his wife, downs her, kicks her out of the room, and then has the nerve to say she's the uptight one, and then ask her son to go against his father. Back in Anna's bedroom, her hair starts falling out again, and the mirror with the lipstick on it that says, don't do it, Anna, it drives her crazy. So she basically smashes the mirror. And I gotta say, that's one, that's a lot of bad luck. <laughs> I'm just saying, I wouldn't have done that, maybe just taking it out of the room, but 
and is at that point, that edge, and I totally understand. At the office, Dr. Hill finds a heartbeat in Anna's uterus. Dr. Hill explains that the the sudden reason why the baby is there is that Anna was pregnant with twins and lost one of the babies. So it's called the vanishing twin syndrome. Now, regardless, Anna is still happy until she sees, you know, Nurse Ivy in the parking garage. And she, of course, she disappears before anybody can see her. Now, my Lord, guys, I... I was right. Of course, I'm so used to saying that, but I was so right about Siobhan and Hamish. They are totally hate fucking. Oh yeah. This poor guy is in love with her. Okay. But she is definitely not in love with him. And Siobhan implies that there is something behind the idea of the movie that nobody can know about, but we don't get any more information on that in this episode. So we need to talk about the viral video that the Ashley is set up for Anna. Remember when I said that Anna changes her mind? Yes, she does. And she goes to take her feminine power back. That video was so hilarious that those of you who know my channel, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. I'm excited for it. Dex and Virginia are basically having lunch and a little chat. Virginia tells Dex that her husband, his father, satanically abused her. And she said that her husband drugged her and violated her in heinous ways, in certain ways that she doesn't know. But there were photographs, I guess, and video taken. Wow, that's awful. So back at home, Nicolette congratulates Anna on being pregnant and gives her a bouquet of roses that were just delivered. Now, Nicolette mentions that being pregnant means that you're like part of a sisterhood. And it was a very sweet, catchable moment. So I know that's definitely going to come back to bite us one day. Now, Anna reads the card on the roses. It's from an unknown person. And the card says that you can't trust any of them. And that dot on Anna's face is noticeably getting bigger. Later that night, Anna goes to the fridge and sees pickles and ice cream in the freezer. She also finds that picture of Dex and his late wife, Addie, and Talia and her wife in the kitchen. Afterwards, Anna goes back down to the devil basement again and she hears voices from the other side of the tiny door and she tries to open it, but it's locked. And when she's trying to pull it open, she falls back and she hits her head. When she wakes up, flies are surrounding her little dead raccoon baby and her gums are bleeding again. Guys, I really love Anna, but this girl is a big mess. Anna checks her phone and sees that the Golden Globe nominees for best actress in a drama are announced and Anna is a nominee. Right then, she starts munching down on her dead baby. I kid you not. I did not need to see that. It was a gross moment. It added an extra point to the episode. I thought this episode was okay. I enjoyed the introduction of the Ashleys, but I think that was almost one of the enjoyments that I got other than Anna's like take back viral video. That was a very great moment. The whole my body, the whole video itself, I agree with it absolutely i just thought that the way that they did it was hilarious one thing that i really absolutely liked was how dex tried to gaslight anna because it's those little things like that for people like us who know that what we saw in a previous episode and we go back and we check it and we know that he's lying we had to also take it under advisement that Anna is a unreliable narrator too at this point. She's had way too many blackouts. She's missing way too many hours. I tend to believe that Anna is reliable and that we can believe in what in the course of events that have happened based upon how she sees them because I believe that is the truth. What do you guys think? Do you think Anna is unreliable or do you think that her version of events is the truth? Let me know in the comments. I liked the little section with Nicolette. I love how they're integrating MJ, MJ Rodriguez more in the season. One thing I hated, and I know all of you did too, and we have to talk about very quickly, was the beginning. Guys, I love this show. You know me, I love this show. I will love this show even at its worst. But now they're testing me. I don't want another Antichrist baby. If they turn this baby out to be someone other than the Antichrist, I'm going to be so happy. Maybe as a rebirth of male scathage. I don't care. But not the Antichrist. Not again. And this episode, even though at certain points it was all right, had certain things that I liked, that beginning just crushed everything. That little hand coming up and looking exactly like the Antichrist baby. 
I just lost all hope. I think that's one thing that all fans are all together on. We're done with Murder House and we're done with Antichrist Babies. We're done. We're done with it. Pick something new. They had such an opportunity to pick something new with Danielle Valentine's book. And what did they do? They chose so far what it looks like to go back to Satan. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's just so overdone and oh man, I kind of wish that they would have went a different way. If they were going to bring back the witches, at least bring back the witches from Roanoke. N maybe not necessarily from Coven, but a different Coven. <sighs> so with that in mind, I give this episode, I mean, it would have landed in a three, but due to the extra point of Anna eating the raccoon, the disgustingness gave it the extra point, so it's getting a four. What do you guys rate the episode? Uh, I'm so sorry that I feel like this, but I am really feel terrible that the show did this. I'm hoping that maybe the next episode will be a little better, but it seems like this is the way that they're going with the show. Still love the show. I'm just a little disappointed that the Antichrist comes back again for like literally the fifth time, a 12 season show. Hello everyone, welcome back to my freak show. I am Mary Girl Moody, and today we're going to talk about AHS Delicate Episode 5, Preacher. Now, this episode opens in Manhattan in 1987. Dr. Hill and, of course, the antler chicks in black are back, and they're helping Miss Preacher give birth, as per their agreement. And he says it's going to be a long night, but the baby is suddenly born. Now, it's the Hamptons, 2023. Dex and Virginia are walking on the beach, and she keeps asking him to testify for her, but he says he didn't see anything. She says that she just wants him to testify as a character witness only. He refuses, and she says that he will regret not believing in her. Bitch! Oh, guys, ah, oh, this is awesome. Siobhan is now representing Babette. Anna's rival and her best actress, you know, category nomination and in life. Oh my God, that was awesome to see that opening scene and Babette's like, ooh, she takes one of the pastries out. She's like, may I? Licks it and she's like, oh, I better not and puts it back. Wow. That was true petty behavior that I approve of. I hate Babette as a character, but the scene was really great. Taylor Richardson is such a fantastic actress. And I love how AHS writes good characters to hate. And man, I hate this bit. I hope Babette's future comes to an end way before the season finishes. I cannot wait to see this bitch die. Anna confronts Siobhan over this. And Siobhan is so nonchalant about it that it's actually funny. She says that she doesn't have a non-compete clause. This is business and it's a boundary that Anna does not want to cross. Okay. Kim really seems to have that bitch down. Now, before Anna leaves Siobhan, she gives her more B12 vials. And that red dot on Anna's face is looking more like a bullseye at this point. After leaving her attorney's office, Virginia has a vision of the four antler chicks in black watching her in the alley. Miss Preacher approaches her and she tells her that she needs to talk to her. And she explains to Virginia in a restaurant that when Miss Preacher was 25 years old, she was a budding fashion designer. She had a one night stand with a guy and got pregnant. And when she went to have the big A, and no, I don't mean Hester Prim, a woman approached her and offered Miss Preacher help. She said if Miss Preacher gave her the baby, that she would give her the world. So she gave the woman the baby after she gave birth to it. Miss Preacher says that Virginia's husband has nothing to do with all of this, but Dex and Anna do. She's worried about them. She says that Dex was part of like this satanic cult at one time but he gave it up for Addie. She says that this satanic cold has been after their family for a long time. Now we never get any more of this scene or anything else that what happens, but it certainly gives us a lot of information and I'm so ready to do a theory video about it, guys. Back at home, Dr. Hill is examining Anna because she's been in intense pain. And to Dex's credit, he actually does care that Anna's in pain and he asks the doctor to examine her more thoroughly when he kind of brushes her off. He does say that Anna cannot travel for the rest of her pregnancy, meaning that she has to miss the Golden Globes. Anna asks Dex to invite Sonia over for some girl time. While in the shower, more of Anna's hair comes out. And after she gets out of the shower, she finds another summer day doll left out for her and her bedroom. This one has red roots 
at the top indicating bloody roots from Anna's hair falling out. Sonia comes over for dinner at the Alcott house. Straight out, Nicolette does not like Sonia. She gave her the old up and down look and then a disgusted face. Loved it. And while they talk at dinner, Sonia says that Dex told her about Anna Stalker. And Anna confesses that she thought Sonia was the one following her because the stalker wore the same green heels as Sonia did at the art opening. Sonia says that she never wears green, even on her feet. I have to say, guys, real quickly, that I went back and I checked because you know me. You know me! I always go back and check. Sonia had the same heels as she did at the art gallery that was the same woman that was under the stall when Anna went out to dinner with her and Dex. Same foot, same everything. Sonia conti continues to talk and she tells... Anna and Dex that her mother used to physically abuse her. So she left home at 17. And she was talking about how she's grateful for the pain because it got her where she is today. And she says specifically that it got her to the table sitting with Anna. Anna walks Sonia out to her car and asks her if she's seen the picture of Dex and his wife before and shows it to her. Sonia says no, she's never seen the picture, but she does confirm that she looks exactly like Addie. She tells Anna that, you know, call her if she needs anything. She's only 15 minutes away. Woo! I don't know if I'd like that, guys. That bitch is too close for my comfort. Now, Nicolette is looking in the drawer where Anna had the picture of Dex and Addie, Italian, or wife. She asks Nicolette if she's looking for something in the drawer. And she's like, nope. She says she doesn't know Sonia despite knowing her last name. And she says that, you know, just she looked at her that way because she looks like an old friend. Anna asks if her old friend's name was Adeline, and she says no. Hamish and Siobhan are having dinner, and he wants to know why Siobhan gave him the script for the Artur, told him to tell everyone that he wrote it, and to cast Anna as the lead. Now, despite everyone telling him that the film would tank, especially if Anna was involved in it, he still did it, and it became exceedingly successful. He wants to know what's going on and who Siobhan really is. Now, this scene is left unresolved, and we do not get any more in the rest of the episode. Anna meets Cora for physical therapy, and I love Taffy Jevonson. Oh my gosh, guys, she was fantastic as Feather in Scream Queens. She's done so many other projects, but I'm so glad to see her back in the, you know, Ryan Murphy AHS universe somewhat, because, I mean, she's a great actress. Okay, I should tell you guys really quickly, this just warning, this is an SA. She gets Anna to, like, take off her pants and get on the massage table. Wow, that's just... A lot. I wouldn't have crossed, but okay. And she goes inside Anna, literally. And Anna is so uncomfortable. She tells Cora three times to stop. Cora does not. Okay, so finally, Anna's like, look, get the fuck out of me. This poor character was essayed, and she tells her husband, her husband, what happened. And he fucking laughs at her fucking laughs at her. I was so triggered by that. To laugh about it is cruel. He tries to explain Cora's a professional. She knows what she's doing. Just because she's a fucking professional does not mean that she can't essay another woman, okay? Or a man. Anna does stand up for herself and she's like, why don't you just ever believe me? And get this, Dex thinks that Anna is upset because she can't go to the Golden Globes. I'm so upset that I can't even say Golden Globes right. Anna laughs at this stupid reason, and he gets angry. I mean, the difference between this, this couple is astronomical. They both react completely different, and they should, in my opinion, they should not be together. Anna accuses Dex of marrying her to get over Addie, and she also says that he just, she wants him to admit that he thinks she's crazy and making up everything from the stalker to the nurse and everything. And he says, yes. He says, I love you, but uh, she should have dumped him. That pissed me off so badly. Anna tells Dex that she basically needs him to believe her. And he says he can't do that. He knows if he will just believe his wife, his relationship will get better. Everything will get better if he just takes a chance and believes her. But he says he can't do that. So Dex is actively taking a chance and not helping his marriage. Yeah, he's absolutely having an affair with Cora. Now Dex wants to leave the conversation and go watch the Golden Globes. Of 
course he does. Anna goes to the basement to watch the awards alone. I do feel a little sad for her there. Sadly, Babette wins the award for Best Actress, and Anna coughs up, like, screws, I guess, and, like, a little long finger. Siobhan calls Anna right at that time and asks her if she wants an Oscar more than a baby. And Anna says yes. Siobhan asks Anna if she'll be willing to do anything to get it. Anna says yes. Someone with a red glove takes Anna and she pulls her out of the camera sight. And then the next thing we know, Anna wakes up in bed. Dex is by her side waking her up and he shows her a news article of Babette dying in a car crash. Guys, I didn't think that would happen so quickly. In that case, die Dex, die! The episode ends with Siobhan calling Anna. So this episode was a little bit better than the previous, just a little. We didn't get answers, tiny bits of detail, I mean, this was supposed to be the series finale for the year. I mean, we're still getting a couple of other episodes, but I expected this to at least give us a little bit more information, and all it seemed to do was give us more red herrings and questions more than it did answers. I am going to give this episode a six because I enjoyed going back to look and see if Sonia was the same person in, uh, the, re in the same shoes as in the art gallery as in the stall in a previous episode, and that led me to a theory. So I did enjoy watching this episode. However, I was frustrated because we didn't get important endings to certain things, such as the conversation last episode with Siobhan and Hamish. We didn't get an ending to the conversation between Virginia and Miss Preach. I, I mean, I'm sure that the show is doing that for intentional purposes, but we're getting so much red herrings and information right now that it almost feels like overload of unnecessary information instead of an overload on necessary information. I'm really enjoying Anna's character. I'm enjoying Emma Roberts portraying her. I'm enjoying the rest of the characters. I'm enjoying the twists and the red herrings. I'm not enjoying the apocalypse uh, references. I'm not enjoying the fact that the show is just not progressing. We just keep getting the same stuff as we did almost in a previous episode. So the show won't. It's almost like the show is refusing to go forward. I can't wait to go back and rewatch these episodes again uh, because I've only seen them all once. And now finally, now that number five is done, I can actually go back and just rewatch one through five straight without having to kind of go back and write notes or anything. I could just actually watch it and see how I feel about it now. As of now, I'm kerfuffled, frustrated. I think there's only like two episodes, two or three episodes left. They've got to wrap this up. I don't want them to just leave it to like the final episode, which it kind of feels like maybe that's what they're going to do. And I'm hoping that they're not. So those are my thoughts on the season so far. I really like it. I just want them to go forward a little more. Look out for my theory videos that are absolutely coming up. Look out for the reviews and more information that is coming for AHS. If you guys like the video and the channel, please subscribe and like if you want to. It's your choice. Do you, honey? And thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you all are having a wonderful holiday. I love you all and beware of our girl, Sexy Scavage. Beware Scavich. of Sexy Scavage. It's my body. I will not let you say another word. Don't be so hostile, bitch. Do you know how hard my staff has worked for you? How many blowjobs were collectively given for you to even be considered? I mean, Derek's jaw may never recover, but- Baby, it's time that you face it. I always get my man. Cut. Damn it, Kim, your voice broke another mirror. Meet the Ashleys. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm Ashley. She's E-I-G-H, I spell it the normal way. Fuck you, Ashley.